world is a beautiful but challenging place to live. And let's face it, life hits hard sometimes. So if you find your hopes and dreams and mental well-being needs a boost, you're tuned in to the right podcast. Welcome to Inspire Us with your host, J. Paul Nadeau, a former hostage negotiator turned motivational speaker and best-selling author. And now, here's your host, J. Paul Nadeau. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inspire Us, episode number four. I'm your host, Paul Nadeau. This episode, I'm going to call Take Control of Your Life and Your Thoughts. I think that's fitting because that's the title of my book, Take Control of Your Life. And that really is uh, a lot of what this podcast will be uh, endeavoring to do, is to help each of us take control of our lives and to discover the things that we have control over and to let go of the things that we don't have control over. So let me start by saying that where we are right now in life, is largely as a result of the decisions, choices, and actions that we've taken and also what we tell ourselves about our circumstances. So where you are right now, as a husband, a wife, a mother, father, son, daughter, friend, whatever is really up to you. How you feel about yourself is also up to you. What you tell yourself really is within your control. Sure, there are some unforeseen bad things that can happen uh, to us that knock us silly. All we need to do is look around the world right now to see how true that is. Bad things do happen to good people, but that's called life. But how we react to what happens to us will also determine our state of mind and the quality of our lives. It will determine the level of our happiness or the level of our sadness. It really is up to us to take control of our lives and our thoughts and to be cautious and aware that like everything worthwhile, our thoughts require consistent maintenance and our lives require consistent examination. Like I mentioned in an earlier broadcast, choosing how you respond to what happens to you is essential to your outlook and mental wellness. We can change our state of mind. When I look back at some of the things that happened that were so bad in my life at the time, over a period of time, you know what? I came to realize that some of that bad stuff didn't actually happen to me. They happened for me. Let me repeat. Some of the things that those bad things that happened to me, I came to realize that they didn't happen to me. They happened for me. It's an exercise I encourage each and every one of you to do often because by doing so, you may realize that you are actually in a much better place for having experienced tough times. Let me explain. In my last episode, I told you that I was severely abused as a kid. And when I look back at that, had it not been for that abuse, I likely never would have become a cop. In fact, I'm pretty certain I never would have. And I never would have gone on to help people or uh, I would not have experienced becoming a hostage negotiator, a peacekeeper, or even an author. I believe that because of what I experienced back then at the hands of my father shaped me to become the person that I am today. Another example was when I think back at, at my divorce. Yeah, that hurt. But again, looking back at that experience, not for what it did to me, but rather for what it did for me made all the difference. Had it not been for that experience, we both would have still been living possibly in a loveless marriage right now, one that wasn't fostering happiness or warmth. I certainly would not have met many of the wonderful people that I've come to meet since my divorce or even gone on to do the many things that I've done, including the TED Talk and writing the book. Looking at things differently can not only help you feel better about your circumstances and your life, it can help make sense of it all. 
I said that I, I came to those realizations over time. And that's simply because it had never occurred to me to look at things that way until much later in life. Now that I do know this gem, that when bad things happen, I can look for the silver lining and to see what, what benefit it was or, or what happened that was positive out of it, it makes a difference. Try this yourself if you haven't already. It may help bring closure and perspective to you as it has for me. Now, I'm not for a second, not for a second, suggesting that you rejoice over the bad things that have happened to you. Not at all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm merely saying that if you try this approach to see if your life may actually be better off for having gone through something, give it a shot. Heck, being abused was not fun. It was not a fun experience, and it was a terrible experience. And for anyone out there who has or is experiencing abuse, yes, it's bad and it's sad, and it's got to stop. But remember, you know, whether abused as a child or an adult in a bad relationship, we've got to look at, at it, you know, and sometimes, you know, just tell ourselves that what's happening to us or what happened to us is not our fault. Many victims that I dealt with in the sexual assault and child abuse unit often blamed themselves for what had happened to them. They blamed themselves for being at the party or dressing in a certain way or trusting that person or a slew of other things that was simply not within their control and was not their fault. And I used to talk to them and, and tell them that bad things happen to good people, and it's not their fault. In a touching scene between Matt Damon and Robin Williams in the movie Good Will Hunting, Matt plays the role of a genius whose troubled past and, and many abuses at the hands of his foster fathers leads him to a troubled life and to work as a janitor. Now, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert, so if you want to, if you want to tune this one out for a few moments, do that, but here's a spoiler alert. Uh, yeah. Because of the number of events that goes on in this character's life, Matt Damon's character's life, he finds himself having to see therapist Sean McGuire, played beautifully by Robin Williams, and over the course of the therapy, Matt's character comes to realize that he was, he was a victim and that what had happened to him was not his fault. Up until that realization, he had been living with the belief that what happened to him was his fault. But therapist McGuire repeats the words that brought Matt's character and me to tears. Yes, I cried when I, when I heard beautiful acting between the two characters. What uh, the therapist tells the character, he says, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. So is there something in your life right now that you're looking back at right now thinking that it was your fault, that you're dwelling on this? Look at it again and recognize that you were a victim and it was not your fault. Yes, sometimes bad things and often bad things happen to us and we need to step back and examine it for what it is. We must also be responsible for taking control of our lives and thoughts and seeing it differently whenever that is possible. Socrates once said, an unexamined life is not worth living. We deprive ourselves of meaning when we don't examine our lives. Examining our lives, our relationships, what's going right and what's going wrong in our lives is an exercise I highly recommend that you do regularly with the intent of being brutally honest with yourself so that you can improve when improvement is required or cut ties when ties are toxic. Are you at this moment blaming yourself for something that was not your fault? Are you still living in the past because of something that was not your fault or within your control? Are you visiting the Poor Me Hotel and checking in 
are you in a toxic or abusive relationship that is hurting you and that needs to end? Waiting to be rescued will not serve you. Staying there will not serve you. You may be waiting for a long time. Rescue comes from within. Rescue comes from having a powerful and positive mindset. It comes from a place in your gut, that intuition that tells you that you are in a bad place and that you need to get the hell out. And then it comes from taking the necessary action to do exactly that. Be responsible for yourself. Don't just think of what you want to do or what you need to do, do it. Our lives are far too short to dwell in the past. Our lives are far too short to blame others for our circumstances or even ourselves for things that we had no control over or things that are happening now that we just, we just can't control. To enjoy the life we deserve to live means to capitalize on the moments we do have and to create a life worth living by taking control of our moments, our thoughts, and ourselves. So how does that work? If say, for example, uh, I'm just thinking up the top of my head, so you, uh, you're in a situation where a loved one may be suffering or dying, or perhaps you're one of the many people who has suffered through the coronavirus uh, consequences and you've lost a lot. Well, the answer to that lies in what you first tell yourself and next what you do about it. If it's the illness of a loved one, what can you do in this moment to make each and every moment precious and meaningful? I remember when my mother was on her deathbed, surrounded by all us kids. It hurt like hell to know we were going to lose mom. But we also knew that her passing meant that she would no longer be suffering. So you know what we decided to do? We decided to sing and tell stories by her bedside. Mom was in a coma, but, but I really believe that, that she probably did hear some of it, if not all of it. And the sound of, of my sister and brother-in-law's guitar filled the room beautifully. We, we didn't give in to the hostage takers that rob us of the precious time that we had with our mom. Because those hostage takers, if you allow them to take control of you, they, they will. And they'll keep you locked up in a dark hole of overwhelming sorrow. Yeah, we shed tears, but we also laughed, sang, and told stories. We made the very best of a bad situation. The same applies to having lost most everything because of COVID-19, say. You have to look at it. Is there possibly a silver lining that you haven't seen? Have you examined it? Have you, have you made plans? Are you just sitting there waiting to be rescued, or are you going to do something about it? Is it possible? Is it possible? to step back and take stock of what you are grateful for, what you still have? Is, is this possibly an opportunity for you to create something new, to, to be something new, or to do something new? Things can always be worse, worse, folks, but to sink in the quicksand of sorrow and misery because of the bad things that befall us serves us nothing but a plate full of tears, a bowl full of tears. Looking for answers and taking action keeps us from sinking further and further. Life is going to knock us down and it's going to sting like heck sometimes. But winners don't remain on the mat, right? After being knocked down, we have to get back up. When those self-sabotaging thoughts first get into your head, take control of them. Don't let them take control of you and keep you locked and immobilized. So, to summarize then, taking control of your life and your thoughts is your responsibility and it is within your power to do that. Sometimes we have to look back at the things that happened to us 
and ask ourselves if they actually happened for us. Living in the past and blaming ourselves for what was not within our control can rob us from living a happy life. If you're going through something tough right now, think of what you can do in this moment to make it better, to take control of your thoughts and to be positive and to, to bring out the best in you. Don't let the hostage takers win, folks. Examine your life regularly and honestly to see what needs to be worked on, improved on, or what needs to go. If you're living in garbage or surrounded with garbage or a person is garbage, get rid of it. One parting thought I'll explore more in another broadcast is this. Your past does not have to equal your future. You're the author of your own life, and how it turns out is largely up to you. It's your responsibility to write the best ending ever. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to, to another episode with you. Take care, and all the best. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for another insightful episode. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and leave your comments. For more information, check out our website at www.inspireus.ca. Remember, it's not what happens to us that matters most. It's how we respond to what happens to us that does. Stay strong and resilient.